Hello, in this lecture, we're going to work some shorter test type problems, problems that could be short enough to fit within a multiple choice question. What we have here is a company used straight line depreciation for an item of equipment that cost 20,300, had a salvage value of 5,600, and six year useful life. After depreciating the asset for three complete years, the salvage value was reduced to 2,030, but its total useful life remained the same. Determine the amount of depreciation to be charged against the equipment during each of the remaining years of the useful life. So what we have here is an estimate that's made. That's what depreciation is. Then halfway through, there was a change to the estimate being a change to the salvage value. And the question is, what do we do about that change? And the answer to that generally is we're going to make the adjustment going forward and adjust the estimate going forward. We're not going to adjust the estimate going backwards. We're not going to recalculate the stuff that happened in the past. All right, so we have the, the limit. So let's calculate this out. We've got the cost. I'm going to say cost is 20300 And then we're going to reduce the cost by the salvage value. So we're going to use the original salvage value, which is salvage value. And that was this 5600 That's what we originally started off with the, at the beginning. We then adjusted that. If we subtract that out, then we're going to say this equals the 20300 cost minus the 5600 salvage. I'm going to go ahead and underline the salvage by going to the home tab, font group, and underlined. And this is the amount to be depreciated. So this is what we will depreciate over that time period, leaving us with the salvage value. Now we're going to divide this by the number of years. And the, and the years are whole years. We didn't buy it in the middle of the year. We don't have to worry about half a year type stuff. We're just going to say six entire years here. And I'm going to go ahead and underline that. Home tab, font, underline. And that will give us the depreciation depre per year on a straight line method per year on a straight line method will equal the 14.7 divided by the six years. So we would have 2,450 per year. And so what happened? Where did we get left off as of the end of the three years and then the estimate change? So after year three, we note that we had an original salvage value which was of course this five six and then it changed we had an, an estimate change salvage value is going to be the 2030 so that's going to be the adjustment we need to make to the salvage value so we're going to say this equals to five six minus the two zero three zero this is the adjustment that we need to make and we need to make it at this point in time after three years so I'm going to think about it this way. We're going to think about it first. We're going to say this is the amount to be depreciated. This is the amount that we originally thought that we were going to have depreciated. I'll put that over here and I'll put this over here a bit so it's all on the screen here. So the amount that we needed to depreciate was this 14.7. How much have we depreciated after three years? Then that's going to be equal to the 2,450 times three years because it's straight line. So that's how much we have depreciated going to go to the home tab underline that so therefore this is what we have left we've got the 147 minus the 7350 so this is the amount that's been depreciated and this is what is left to be depreciated and of course it's even because um, we're halfway through and it's a straight line method now what's going to happen is we need to add to that we have to say well we need to depreciate that 7350 Plus, we need to, we need to uh, calculate and add to it this difference, this change in the salvage value. So we're going to put in this change in the salvage value here and say that now we need to depreciate over the next three years, this 7350 plus this adjustment to the salvage value. This is the amount to be depreciated at this point. And then we're going to take that and we're going to divide it by the number of years, which is three is remaining. So I'm going to go ahead and underline that home tab font underline. And that means for the next three years, we're going to have to take this 10, 9, uh, 2, 0 divided by the 3. And that'll give us the 3, 6, 4, 0. So we need to go forward with 3, 6, 4, 0 per year. And that will account for this change in our estimate to the salvage value. But it accounts for it for that year going forward in terms of the time in which we decided the estimate needed to be made. Next one says that a company purchased a depreciable asset on October 1st, middle of the year, keep that in mind, for uh, one year at a cost of 172000 in year one in October, that is. The asset is expected to have a salvage value of 16800 at the end of five-year useful life if the asset is depreciated on a double declining method. 
the Athens book value at December 31st, year two, will be what? Okay, so now we're going to do the double declining method. So that, that's the key. And note that we have it in October. That's also important. So we have the cost here that we're going to have. I'm going to do this kind of the long way and then show you the short way to calculate the double declining rate, which of course will be the key to the double declining balance. Questions like this will almost always ask at least year two because year one, you know, uh, you could take the straight line and double it. And so year two will often be asked, less likely that year five will be asked for <laughs> because that would take a lot of calculations for a small multiple choice type question. So we have the 172,000 and no salvage value will be taken into account when we're doing this. It'll be accounted for at the end, which again, you won't see a lot because not many multiple choice type questions will ask the end year, but it's good to know that the salvage value will have to be plugged in in the end of the year. So no salvage value when we're figure out, figuring out the rate. So other than that, it's kind of like the straight line method in that we're going to take the cost and we're going to divide it by the number of years of the useful life. So the useful life has what five years. And so if we divide that out, then um, we're going to get the 172 divided by five years. This would be the depreciation for straight line, no salvage value, which is the confusing piece here. Now, if we looked at the ratio of this, we would say, okay, well, that's the 34.4 divided by the cost, meaning, and I'm going to go here, I'm going to go to the home tab, I'm going to go to uh, the numbers and add decimals. So 20%, meaning that if we thought about a five year, we would just say it would be the uh, 172,000 times 0.2 would be straight line and that would give us well let me do that one more time 172,000 times 0.2 would give us our straight line amount so 20 percent is our rate and of course we will double that now just to keep this in mind that you can calculate that rate. the shortcut way of doing it is just to say okay there's five years so i'm just going to say that's one over five and that'll give you the right rate so if it was three years it'd be one over three home tab numbers and then here we go. So there's that. So then we have the double declining rate, which of course is going to be twice that times two of that. So I'm going to underline this home tab font underlined. So the double declining rate is going to be uh, 0.4, we would think. Let's see the, there we go, 0.4. And this is double declining rate. Okay, so that's what we're going to use now. So then when we start calculation, we're going to say year one. Year one, we have the cost let's say cost down here 172,000 and we're going to use our rate our double declining or let's just say this equals the double declining rate and the double declining rate is this 0.4 and therefore I'm going to add some decimals 0.4 underline it might as well therefore the depreciation for year one would be the 172 times 0.4 if it had been for an entire year but it had not been it's only been since October, and it's including October because we bought it on October 1st. So October, I'm count, counting it on my fingers, October, November, December, three months. So we could think about that. Let's break it down to how many months are in a year. There's 12. And we could say, okay, well, then we have this uh, 68.8 divided by 12. That's monthly depreciation then of this 5,733. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and underline this. And then say, how many months have passed then? Three months have passed. So I'm going to go ahead and underline that. And so, therefore, if it's this 5733 per month times three months, that'll give us the 17.2 in the first year. Uh, note that that also could have been calculated over here. This is how a book will normally calculate it. The, we're going to take the uh, 68800, and then we're going to say this 312 is the same as saying just 3 over 12 equals 3 over 12 and that then that ratio is what we can multiply by and say it's this times this and we'll get the same number so when you look at a book problem it'll usually say 3 twelfths um, it, it might even say 1 fourth on that as well so be c conscious of the ratio so this is going to be the depre for year one and this is going, and then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to put uh, the book value, uh, book year one. 
And the book for year one is going to equal the original cost minus the depreciation on the first year. And then we're going to work on year two, which is what they asked for. And it starts off with the book value now. That's why this is important to get that from year one. We get the book value. Once we get that, we're going to multiply that down times the double declining rate, which is the same as it was last time. So that's 0.4 here. So I'm going to go ahead and add the decimals. 0.40 and I'm going to go ahead and underline that and if we multiply that out then now we have the 154.8 uh, times the 40 percent 0.4 and that gives us the depreciation for year two and then the book value for year two I'm going to pull this over I'm going to say book value year two then I'll put this over here it's going to be the book value from last year minus the depreciation for this year and we're going to pull over this is going to be the book value for year two and then of course we would go on to year five like that we would go on to the next one for year three and note what the problem could ask you it could ask you for the depreciation at the end of year two or it could ask you for the book value at the end of year two what's left at the end of year two in this case they asked for let's see the double declining uh the the assets book value so it asked for what's left what's the book value and uh, be careful of the distinction between those two when you're doing these calculations.